Always complaining about the light right at the beginning of these videos, right? Uh, let's see here. There we go, a little bit more light. How about some light in the background? I think we can do that. There we go. Maybe some more over here. Yeah, there we go. Today, we're gonna be screwing around again with MacBooks. Uh, two of them specifically. This is the one that I did the data recovery on and it has been fixed now for a couple of weeks. I've just been sitting on the footage because I didn't want to do a whole bunch of videos about MacBooks back to back. This thing's all up and running now. It actually works great. It's got a hole in the chassis, but that's for extra ventilation. I've edited videos on this thing, and let me tell you, it is a night and day difference, not performance-wise, but the backlight on this thing is LED. Now, I have photosensitivity to a lot of flickering lights, fluorescence, other things like that. And the iMac I've been using for the last, well, forever, since vlog number four, actually has a fluorescent backlight. It's a cold cathode tube, which is a form of fluorescent lighting. Anyways, when I'm editing videos, staring at the screen for extended periods makes my brain hurt. I have to take a lot of breaks. This thing, I can sit and stare at it for two hours, no fatigue whatsoever. <laughs> so, um, we're gonna continue on with some experiments. Let's go ahead and jump back to where I fixed this thing. I actually got a bunch of parts for it and attempted to make a repair to the LCD connector before I got the new logic board. But anyways, you can check that out. Probably gonna need to get a new back cover for this MacBook Air. Most of the screws are pulled through the holes and this little back cover plastic thing is a little bit missing. I'm gonna try and bend this back into shape with a rubber mallet. I don't know how successful I'm gonna be with that, but a new back cover is probably in order for this thing. Yeah. That's a little better, but uh, these things are pretty inexpensive on eBay. You can't buy Apple parts on Amazon anymore, unfortunately. They uh, lock down all the stuff to authorized resellers only, and authorized resellers are not allowed to sell uh, MacBook or just Mac parts in general. This will probably be something for Shenzhen coming straight out of China on eBay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna try and put this back on here. That's gonna wind up shorting everything out. <laughs> All right, well, for now, uh, the next leg of this project is gonna be getting this little solid state drive put in the other MacBook, which is the one I've been using. I need to get a pentalobe screwdriver set, though. They use these weird little screws that don't exist. So, I'm gonna head down to Fry's Electronics. I'm pretty sure they have those in stock. We have arrived at the Fry's Electronicals. Let's see if I can steer in here with one hand. Steering wheel, brake. Okay, that was a little bit sketchy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Nothing like holding a camera and trying to drive. Actually, you know what though, I'm not gonna park right next to the door because people always block my lift when I park there. So we're gonna go over here a little ways. There we go, that'll do. It's been a little while since I've encountered that kind of fog. It's actually kind of cool, but at the same time, it really sucks to try and drive in it. <laughs> uh, I'm glad it didn't get really bad until I got into the driveway. The street out here was okay, but as soon as I turned down the driveway, nothing. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so we went to Fry's and got some assorted things. I guess I don't need this anymore. Hang on, I gotta untie this knot before I forget. This could be a whole live stream right here. Watching me attempt to untie a knot in my hoodie. There we go. Okay, so two projects. First off, obviously the MacBook with the bullet holes in it. I mean, not actually bullet holes, but it'll make a cool story when I'm sitting in a Starbucks and uh, I can tell people, oh hey, yeah, look, my uh, 
I got shot at with my MacBook. See the, see the hole right there? Isn't that great? <laughs> um, so this thing, we've got a no backlight problem on it. And I got all the supplies hopefully to take care of it, or at least some of it. I believe our issue is still the LCD connector right here. It looks like a couple of the pins uh, corroded off and they're not connected anymore. So, I've got, wait for it, flux, good leaded solder, solder wick. Ooh, and for the other MacBook, acrylic conformal coating. Now this stuff will fry your brain. This has to be used outside. What this is, is an acrylic coating for circuit boards so that water doesn't damage it. Because when I get this thing completely fixed, it's going to be completely conformally, conformally coated so that if I happen to be drinking tea and spill some in here, it's not gonna hurt anything, probably. Oh, and a no brand named uh, set of security bits. We're gonna use this for the first project. Let's put this MacBook off to the side here. And I really can't remember if I talked about this other computer that I got. It's yet another MacBook. I impulse bought this one. I put a case on it so it's a little bit better, but someone laser etched a bunch of stuff in it. I got this for like $150. But I'm putting the solid state drive in here and I needed these screws because this has pent, I need screwdriver bits. Because this has pentalobe screws in it. Okay, camera battery's about to die, so I'll be back. The battery's almost dead, but I went to open this box. Look, <laughs> that's an awesome box. I don't care what anyone says, that is amazing right there. I just did that thing again where I was recording and then I wasn't recording because I swapped the battery and I didn't wait for the camera to boot up. Anyways, this is an old MacBook. This is an old MacBook from like 2011 that I impulse bought for like $150. As you can see, someone laser etched a bunch of stuff in it. And uh, that wound up making it a little bit cheaper. But it only has a 64 gig drive in it. When I got these other MacBooks, I was given spare parts. So I've got 128 gig solid state drive here and a 256. So we're gonna put the 128 gig one in here because 64 gigs is not big enough to do anything. I got the magnetic screwdriver bit here. We've got a pentalobe screwdriver, which is Apple's thing they invented just because, well, whatever reason, but in here. So we're gonna take these screws out of here and this should be a pretty straightforward process. Wow, this thing hasn't been opened. Yeah, this is the first time this thing's been opened. It still has Loctite on the screws. You can tell because there's a bit of resistance as you unscrew them. Also, it is almost nine o'clock New Year's Eve. That party I was at earlier was an East Coast New Year's thing and that place actually closes at 10, so they were just doing like an early on one for people that go to bed early. And at some point, and at some point this garage door is going to open and I'm fully expecting that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Are you ready for the awesomeness that is MacBook? Did I take all the screws out? Yes. Wow, that's amazing. I've never opened one of these that has never been opened before. This thing's been around since 2011 and nothing has been inside of it. Oh, you know what I just realized? I forgot to get some thermal paste. The thermal paste Apple uses on these processors is not the best stuff in the world. And since I was already in here, oh, whatever, let's just swap the drive. Solid state drive is right here. Yoop. This little guy right here. So we use the same pentalobe screwdriver. Okay, it's actually a different size. Let me just strip that out. Oh no, this one's actually a Torx. So many different screws on this whole machine. Okay, so there's that. Very easy. 
lift slightly and pull. Ah, there we go. Do a quick comparison here. And it's different. Oh, good. Well, so much for that. Our length is different and you can see our spacing here is different too. Awesome. Well, and see it's Lame. Well, I guess we'll have to stick with our 64 gig thing. Well, I mean, it's fine. This thing's sort of like an iPad with a keyboard. It, it works for what I do, which is basically browse the web. <laughs> um, I'm probably gonna sell this thing though, because once I get this other MacBook fixed over here, um, that's gonna be my daily driver. Can't believe it's different. Well, actually, no, I can totally believe it. This other MacBook's only two years newer. Well, while we're in here. Oh, I thought for a second there was liquid damage here, but that's just edge bonding. <laughs> okay, while we're in here, I'm gonna show you what a proper LCD connector is supposed to look like. So this little thing folds up and out of the way here. And if you look real close, you can see we've got some nice happy little pins. That may look like a whole solid um, piece of metal, but if you look close, that's a bunch of little itty bitty pins. Now compare that to this. See how there's uh, some skid marks over here? I looked real close and uh, at least one of those pins is not working. And it's like pins one through three that are questionable and that's where our power for the backlight comes from. I've taken the board out and I've checked the boost circuitry on the back of it that controls the backlight or creates the power for it and it's fine. So I guess we're gonna pivot. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and work on this thing instead of this one because this thing, uh, it's, yeah. I guess we'll put this back together. cases are very tight fitting. It takes a lot of screwing around to get these things on here, but once they're on, you are good to go. It also sounds like you're breaking it when you put them on. There we go. Oh, dang it, the back came off. All right. I think we are... Okay. Everything is engaged. Now we have our cover back on this thing and we're good to go. I'm warming up the soldering iron and they're going to attack this other MacBook. If you look over to the right side of the screen, you can see it looks like there's a pin missing. And that's the one we need. I was able to clean up the rest of those. You can see it looks like there's a pin missing right over here. This is a case where you could replace the connector, but I don't have a hot air rework station. And you can get these boards on eBay for like a hundred bucks. Yeah, so we still don't have a backlight. Hmm, fireworks. Yeah, so we still don't have a backlight. I do need to replace this uh, keyboard cable here. It was slightly damaged by some aggressive disassembly before I got it. And with that pin missing, um, I think what I'm probably gonna do is just get a whole new logic board. I mean, I could get a hot air rework station. I don't know, I, I would need a microscope or a magnifying glass or something else that I could really get in there and look at it with. And I just don't have the equipment to handle this right now. We got the connector cleaned up though and there is a pin missing. That's why it's not working. I'll show you here. The thing will still boot up. I just reconnected the battery. You can see the thing is booted. There's sort of an image here, but 
without the backlight, it makes it a little bit tricky to see. Yeah, see, you can see stuff going on on the screen there. At least we know the thing's functional and it still works. I'm just gonna shelf this thing, and uh, once I feel like I have some money to throw at this, uh, we'll go ahead and get the thing going. But for now, I've got the other MacBook. I can't do video editing on that other one because it's kind of slow. I mean, this one will actually be good. Uh, this, I mean, it is, an, it is a MacBook Air, but you can do video editing on these things because I don't film in 4K because, in my opinion, 4K is, uh, 4K is still kind of a scam. <laughs> uh, plus, editing in 1080 is a lot. It requires much less powerful hardware and time and whatnot. I think that's gonna conclude our uh, attempting to fix MacBooks for now. Uh, pretty much the only reason I attempted this was, at first, that whole area was blackened and it looked like the pins were maybe still there. And if that's the case, usually you can kind of clean them up, resolder them on, and you're good to go. But if they're missing, that's a different story. I think we'll call that good for now. Guess what just came in the mail? The new logic board for my MacBook. Here we go. I actually filmed some stuff about this previously that I didn't include in the last video, just because it was kind of long. But I attempted to fix some of the pins on this LCD connector here. Since the backlight, basic, the backlight circuit basically exploded and blew up some of the pins on the connector, instead of getting this board repaired, I opted to just get a new board. And as we can see here, we have our old board, and here's the new board. Kind of interesting though, there's a screw that holds down this corner of the heatsink, and when I took it apart, I accidentally ripped that off. That's kind of a rookie mistake. But if you look at this new board, they did the exact same thing. There's supposed to be a bracket on there with a screw hole. <laughs> just kind of funny. It doesn't really make a difference operationally, but just sort of funny. So anyways, this is a 2014 MacBook Air. It has the dual core i5 processor with four gigs of RAM and a 256 gig solid state drive. I'm gonna take this drive out and put it in the new one. I also have a 128 gig one over here somewhere, but this new board, is a Core i7 with eight gigs of RAM, which is the maximum specs that you could get in this particular year in a MacBook. The RAM and the processor is literally soldered to the mother motherboard. So uh, we're gonna swap this out. Essentially all we need to do is take off the Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi card, the solid state drive, and rip out all the screws, put the new one in, and we should be good to go. Hopefully the uh, liquid damage when the backlight circuit exploded and a whole HS ball of fire didn't damage the screen. The connector to the LCD looks okay. It's this little itty bitty thing right here. Oops. And I'm going to just kind of inspect this board a little bit. It looks like it's in pretty good shape, but I'm gonna give this the once over with my eyeballs. And we're going to hook this up and see if our backlight works. So let's get to taking this apart and we will make this MacBook great again. I am missing one part, however. The keyboard and trackpad cable has not arrived. It was supposed to arrive today. I also got a new back cover. This was $5 on eBay. <laughs> so we've got that ready to go. The keyboard trackback cable is not here, so I guess that means I get free shipping on it because it's, it was guaranteed delivery. Let me turn my brakes on. It was guaranteed delivery by today and it didn't show up. So anyways, all right, let's get to this. All right, we've got our fan connected, some of the connectors. So let's go ahead and put in a few of the screws. I guess before I get too carried away here, I should probably test this. So let's plug in our connectors and give this a test. Oh, come on. Now the battery's dying in this camera. Okay, I'll just be back when this thing's done and ready to go. Okay, battery's about to die, but let's go ahead and give this a test real quick. We're gonna open this thing up, plug in the power supply, and see if we get a backlight. Here we go. Uh, 
Oh. I guess I have to hook up the DC inboard cable before anything is going to happen. I'm like, why isn't it turning on? There we go. Okay. All right, got a green light. Let's see if it boots. Hallelujah, there's a backlight. Awesome. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, time to charge the battery. I'm putting the battery back in now just because when that trackpad cable gets here, I'm gonna have to take this back out again to replace that cable, but whatever, that's okay. All right, we've got all of our screws in here. Let me double check and make sure this hinge is not interfering with any of the cables. All right, looks like we're good. And all the screws are in. Oh, I guess I need to put the solid state drive in here if I expect this to do anything. There we go. I went ahead and swapped the messed up screw for the one on the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card because there's no reason that's ever gonna come out of here. I may upgrade this drive at some point. 256 gigs is probably plenty, but uh, just for no reason, we'll put the good screw in there. All right, let's plug our battery in. And now, let's see. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that our keyboard and trackpad are not working. But check this out, you should see the back light up. Oh, there we go. See, it lights up. Now this thing should boot up, in theory. We've just confused it to death because it now has a different processor and motherboard and machine ID and a bunch of other stuff. So we'll give it a minute here and it should spring to life, hopefully. After it's done licking its wounds. Oh look, you can see a reflection of me. Hello. Hey, Apple logo, sweet. Booting, booting, booting. Oh, we have a backlight on the keyboard. Luckily we still have our Bluetooth keyboard over here, which we had prepared earlier. I believe it should still work, so when I turn this on, it should say keyboard connected. Oh, there we go. Type in my password. There we go. So we have a laptop with a wireless keyboard and wireless mouse. And look at that, it boots up and works. Oh, this is so fantastic. All right, let's look at our specs here. Oh yeah, look at that. We've got an Intel Core i7, eight gigs of RAM, that's DDR3, and our Intel HD graphics, that's 1.5 gigs. Now, the GPU on this machine is actually integrated into the processor, which is good. The old MacBook that I was using to edit video on is this thing down here but it has a separate GPU and that particular year MacBook has an issue where the GPU just stops working if there's a slight breeze. So this thing is going to allow me to be able to edit video on the go while I'm traveling and all that stuff. So this is kind of the last piece of the puzzle before I start gallivanting around the country. Um, although the last, last piece of the puzzle is gonna be that trackpad cable whenever it arrives. It was supposed to be here today, it's not, but uh, yeah. Well, I guess um, I can go ahead and put the bottom cover on this thing and uh, we're good to go. I'm assuming our back cover is going to fit this thing. It's from the same year range and model and everything. This is a used one from the interwebs. Oh wow, this is actually complete. It even has the little um, foam thingy dealies on the corners. Cool. Um, straighten out. There's a little center plastic bracket here that has to be straight. Okay, there we go. That's on there. And I think I might need, yeah, I'm gonna have to bend a little bit of the aluminum here that ripped. Uh, I'm pretty sure, let me see. Yeah, that's not gonna fit on there with it like that. So let me, uh, let me grab some pliers and I'll take care of that real quick. Probably should have done this while the motherboard was out of it. Um, but, oh, never mind. The, uh, the pieces just break right off. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, cool, well, that was easy. Now, our cover should fit right on here. 
with a very satisfying snap. Make sure everything's good. All right, looks like we're fine. Ooh, it lines up. All right, here we go. Click. And now we have our screws. <laughs> it's funny, these screws actually cost more than this entire back cover. And these are what require this pentalobe screwdriver, which I think is this one. We'll put our long screws in here first. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. There's nothing for that screw to attach to because that's, that's why there's a hole in the front of the case. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so we won't be using that long screw. We'll use this one. Wow, these new screws even have Loctite on them already. Fancy. A little bit of a tight fit there. The chassis is tweaked on this for some reason a little, but that's okay. All said and done, after the money they paid me to do the data recovery and the parts I had to order, I'm into this thing like maybe $250. And that's not doing too bad for something that you can do video editing on on the go. I was just thinking maybe I shouldn't put these screws in until I get the trackpad cable, but I want to play around with this thing. Even though I have to use an external keyboard and mouse, this is like the syndrome where you got to play with the... Uh, Play with your new toys in the car on the way home from the store. Can't wait around. And our case is, ah, there we go. It's not supposed to snap like that, but uh, what are you gonna do? Okay, there we go. We have a MacBook. <laughs> it is weird though that the, um, that's the reflection of the monitor behind me. Um, it is weird that the keyboard doesn't work, but the power button works. Oh yeah, I forgot this other speaker's still broken. Guess I don't really need two speakers, but anyways. I don't have a MagSafe 2 power adapter, but I do have the MagSafe 1 to MagSafe 2 power adapter adapter, <laughs> and I think that's all we really need. So, cool. I'm going to get this thing set up, and I still need to securely erase the drive that was on here from the previous user. So I'm gonna take care of all that stuff and then, uh, yeah, super happy. <laughs>